So recently we started working on a project where we needed to map BCE dates in ArcGIS Online and create some type of animated time slider in the program. And the challenge with this is that ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Pro actually can't tell the difference between a BCE date and a common era date. So for example, if you are mapping a 300 common era, like we have down here, you can map it as January 1st, 300 CE, just to kind of pick an arbitrary month and day for the time. But if you are trying to map 400 BCE, for example, the program does not have a way to understand that this is not 400 common era. It will think it's 400 common era. It doesn't have a way to understand that this value is supposed to come before other values. So the way that we can work around this is create a secondary date column. And this date column is actually specifically for our time bar. And then we create another column that's a display date. And ultimately what we'll do is use this to create the time bar and then just hide the date in the pop-up. So when the user clicks on the point, they'll actually just see the display date. Our time bar is gonna look a little bit weird and we'll take a look at that in a second, but this is probably the closest workaround that you can get to display BCE dates on ArcGIS Online or if you're building a time bar and just want the visual effect of having that date appear correctly. Um, so what we'll do first is just kind of look at the data. So I have some common era, some BCE date here. And what I have found is that fill in the dates for the common era dates first. These should be pretty easy to figure out, kind of based on what your actual data is. And then going backwards, backfill your data and count backwards. So when I start looking at BCE and then my CE dates, I just count backward. And although this doesn't directly match, obviously we've got a 160 to an 1800 BC, visually on the map, it will still appear correct because that date will appear before the other dates. So this is kind of the workaround that we're using in order to import some point data in this example onto a time map and create a chronological map. So once you get that finished, you can import it as a feature layer into ArcGIS Online. And the first thing you'll notice is that on the time bar, this is the part that will look a little weird, is it will still carry over your date fields. And there's not much we can really do about that. It's gonna look a little weird, but if you hit the play bar, the, dates, the dates and the points appear correctly on the map. So just from like a visual standpoint, it will work correctly. You just have to not worry too much about the dates on the time bar. Um, it's even something that you could mention in your research project if it's for research. Put a little footnote or a disclaimer or something in there to just say, hey, this is what the limitations of the program are. This is what we have to do to display the data correctly. So in order to kind of update the pop-ups, so in the, in the points here when I click on them, we get all of our spreadsheet data. There's our display date and then there's our date that we used for the time bar. We can just shut that off by going to our pop-up option here and then in our fields list, just remove that date field. So that will actually remove, you can even remove as many fields as you want and kind of reorient them a little bit, get them in the order that you want them to be. So that's kind of our workaround for creating maps or time maps that require BCE dates. And visually, it works for our users, and you just have to make sure to mention it in your paper or your research project that this is a current limitation of the program and just the workaround that we're using.